I uh, will go ahead and uh, check our. You can you can reload the agenda. Yeah, I'll do that in a second. Give me a moment. We had some uh, action items. I want to make sure that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I put the um, the text I put together on the um, H flag is now on the agenda. Okay, I guess we're five minutes uh, after. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay, let's see. So, do you want to go ahead and uh, talk about the agenda, uh, Bawa? Or uh... Uh, it's yeah, quickly. It's pretty much uh, just putting uh, Curiatis proposed draft on the first nibble in, and. My intention here is just to give it 10, 15 minutes and then we break. And then we take the discussion next time. So people have time to read. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we have a presentation from how you on header parsing. Uh, and we do that. And uh, if there is time left for me to talk about the H flag, I can do that. Otherwise we we'll do it next time. Okay. Yeah, um, that's good. Then there was an email from John Drake, uh, and he he thought he was on the agenda, but he didn't ask. Uh -huh. So he didn't ask explicitly. Yeah, yeah. But that's fine. I think we okay. can that, leave room. No, I actually sent a mail back to John, but just uh, uni okay. directional and say I want to do that next time. Okay. Okay. Uh, no worries. No. No for problem. One reason, uh -huh. one reason it's my own. I want more time to read. Eric, yeah. um, could you upload uh, it for me to the wiki? Uh, you, you upload it like email, the email you mean? Yeah, yeah. just upload the email, please. Oh, sure thing. No problem, John. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get it ready for next time. So we will add the discussion next time. Sure thing. Okay, so I'll go with item number one on the agenda, Loa. So I, I presume we want to review the action items, and you have uh, at least one action item that you took action on. Uh, yeah, I sent, I sent out the design directive on um, post deck data. Uh, it was sent to, I don't remember, I sent it to the MPLS working group, and I think I sent it to uh, all the shares. However, this should actually generate a new action item on you. And that is actually a free, free working group consensus call on uh, the, the, that same text. We didn't do that last time. It was only MPLS working group. Um, so there needs to be some negotiation with um, the other shares and uh, how we actually uh, send it to working group and where we take the discussion. Ah, let's go. Huh? Somebody's playing soccer. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> scored the goal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. yeah. No, I okay. I I'll take that action item and uh, check with the other working groups. Probably what was mentioned is a draft, and then we do. Uh, a consensus call or an email. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what uh, what is the preferred option. We, we, we should we should start from the uh, the directive that is out there, and we should change if necessary. 
Yeah, this I one, right? That's a, but yeah, this is the one, right? And uh, I don't see anything uh, because I did not. Oh, yes. Yeah, now I see. I was looking at my, uh, my version of the agenda. Um, yeah, oh. that's right. Yeah. And uh, if there are changes, there are changes. Uh, so we do that, but um, okay, uh, we need to need to agree with the shares about the procedure. But we, of course, we're not normally doing consensus call in more than uh, one organization at a time. Yeah, sure. But since you suggested it last time, you take the action item. Yeah, yeah, I, I'll take it. No problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, sure thing. No problem. Uh, that metals. So my comment to that is that I have no problem with checking with these. Uh, Though strictly they're not part of the uh, running the um, uh, the joint meetings, but this is fine with me. Uh, they they're not attending. You mean right? Uh, mm, I think... uh, so they, some of them are attending. That's. That's good, the, but the working group chairs, when I asked them if they wanted to be part of this, they said uh, that they were happy with how the situation was. So they're not formally attending. But uh, we can check if they want to have the consensus call in TS also. All right. Okay. It should be MPLS also. Yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> Uh, to get the consensus, we already have the consensus on MPLS, right? Uh, we have, but no. when I re rewrote it, I think I thought that the changes was such that it's kind of probably a good idea to consensus call it in PALS again, uh, in uh, MPLS again. Okay, I'll include the MPLS working group anyway. Hmm. Yep. Uh, so I'm reviewing the, the open action items from last time. Uh, we had an action item on Kiriti, well, primarily Kiriti to prepare a, a rough draft on the first uh, MPLS payloads first nibble registry. I think oh, we've made some decent progress there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me take notes. Uh, so we we have an initial draft. Well, I haven't posted it, but um, I, I will have a short discussion this time um, and maybe a longer discussion next time, and then uh, we can post it. Uh, I can, I mean, after the discussion today, um, I can post it. I haven't taken uh, all the uh, comments into account yet, but I will. Okay. Uh... Do, do we had an action item to schedule a meeting uh, to discuss uh, coexistence of MIA, DETNET, and Control Word and OEM. The write up, as I read it now, is uh, is ruling out the coexistence. Um, Eric. Yeah. Yes, uh, my understanding that what is ruling ruled out is uh, use of uh, ancillary data post bottom of the stack. Yeah, all these are post uh, the the post stack data PSD, all of them. Yeah, my my understanding was that um, the GAL and ACH don't. Um, Co co coexist with post stack data, but not that the control word doesn't. So I think we have to be maybe a little uh, crisper. Uh, I, I yeah. think that control word too, because control word uh, expects to follow the bottom of the stack. Right, but but the write up here is saying that 
uh, even the control word is not an option, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, um, I checked with their um, .NET MPLS OEM draft, and we use a distinctive uh, .NET ACH. So um, since we are um, referring to .NET control word, we need to add .NET ACH here as well. Well, so why, why do you, I mean, I don't know what you're doing with the first nibble, but why do you need a special ACH rather than sitting on um, uh, treble zero one and having a different um, ACH um, um, channel assigned? Uh, because we're using the sequence number for the pre-off um, in ACH. So, uh, uh, um... So hang on a second. So uh, packet comes in. It's got uh, it's got zeros at the f zeros four zeros and then the then the sequence number. So new packet comes in. Uh, it's an OAM one that could have three zeros one the same sequence number and channel information in the next um, uh, long word. There are there are there are multi long word um control words in existence in uh the pseudo wire world already so you don't need a new first nibble you could do it uh, within the existing infrastructure no we are not changing the first nibble oh uh, right okay so your quad zero so your your treble zero one the sequence number and then a uh the uh ach parameters um the channel parameter in the next long word yes so again, fine. Uh, with and, a, and, that's, and that's permitted under the existing design so i i yeah. don't think it needs to be anything so you you need to sort of describe it as being an extension to the design as such if you see what i mean because that just encourages people to go and make random changes way, uh, as we are um identifying that net control work we are just identifying definite ACH. So it's uh, using the same nibble for ACH 0001. Yep. But we but are having a different structure. Yes. And and, okay. and how do you know that it's there? Because it's a detnet packet. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. There's no gal in that piece, right? No, and, and indeed, remember that Sudowire didn't use GAL. Um, yes. Again, we are days. following the Sudowire architecture. Fine, 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 fine. I'm not protective because it's mine, you understand. I'm just protective no, because no, no. I uh, want to make sure that we don't do needless re engineering. Uh, right, I agree. It's a and, and I take Tarek's point that, you know, we, we are saying that uh, PSD is. Uh, you know, you shouldn't have both PSD and any of these. Um, I I had misunderstood that to be just the GAL ACH, but I guess if you have PSD, you sh you, you don't have a control word either .NET or uh, pseudowire. Uh, you don't have the OAM either .NET or pseudowire, and you don't have GAL ACH. Uh, if you if if you don't have PSD, then you you know it's business as usual. Okay. Uh, um, are we in agreement that uh, MIAD cannot coexist with, um, let's say, for example, OEM channel? Oh. MIAD and, 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 and ASH, uh, and ASH, for example. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we are in agreement. Well, we right? will have so, to have an OEM structure um, in any of these new uh, packet structures. Yeah, yeah, but the old OEM Galgash or uh, with yeah, me. Yeah, we, we we don't believe. Well, I can't see any way of making that coexist okay, with we, the new structure. I agree. Agree. So yeah. there, uh, there's an action item <clears throat> um, that we discussed last time uh, to discuss the coexistence. I think we can uh, remove that action item or. It's not well, we might not have a meeting, but I think it's good to um, flag the chairs saying, hey, this is where we're going. Uh, the dead net chair. Okay. okay, I'll uh, I'll keep it for now and I need to understand what's the action item. Um, 
Um, I, I think there, I'll move on to the next action item unless someone wants to elaborate more in, on the previous one. Keep it for now and put the uh, that's not. There was an action item. Mm, interesting. Uh, they share the existing uh, that net internet drafts or RCs related to, or they, they might be affected by MIAD uh, design. On the list, and I think uh, Balaji had sent those. Yes, I, I believe so. Yeah, Balash. that's right. Okay. Uh, I think the the lowest action item you completed that. Uh, um. On the design directive. Prepare discussion on com comments for consensus for the. Uh, I think those are two different. No, they're, yeah, di they're different, but this is done. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, any, any update on this, or this is something to be, uh. Deferred to next week. I can take a look. Yeah. I think next week, next week is full. We'll take it two weeks out. Um, 21st, yeah. Looks like October 2021. <laughs> um, uh, okay, I don't know what is this, uh, this action item about. Oh, uh, we're here somewhere. Uh, um, yeah, maybe these are old action items that we can close. The I gap, so. uh, yeah, sync up with pals, working group chairs. And I, is that something low I, that you, you were the owner of this AI? Uh, uh, I think that one is closed. Sorry, editing is is a little bit hard with this guy, with this editor. So, any comments on this, or did you any resolution comments? Uh, I don't remember exactly what we said. It's just, um, basically, I think we have said, yeah, we agree. And it wasn't more than that. Okay. Uh, I think, I think this one is kind of the precursor to, uh, the one that we actually passed as a design directive. That's where the decision start discussion started. Yeah. Okay. So this mm -hmm. is a progress then the next action item you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have an action item on Kiriti to put a uh, policy for putting in stack data versus post stack data. I think you had good, great write ups on this Kiriti. Uh, is that, uh, 
still in progress or what's uh... it's still in progress uh, so i i did want to post the next version of this draft um unfortunately i got sidetracked with the other draft uh, on the first nibble but i will come back to this so um i guess you can um I, you can put an eta of um a week from today um so uh, we don't have to discuss it but I will post it so at least people will uh, be able to read it, and then we can we can actually uh, discuss it at some later point. Okay. Thank you, Kriti. The, the the next one is also uh, on you. He's still on hook. It's actually me and you to sync up about the uh, user programmable uh, actions or functions, uh, whichever we want to call them. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean maybe we we need to talk about that, and I know John Drake has also some ideas. So let's. Uh, I I I don't I did I know that I did not think up with you. So if you have anything what? to add, no, nothing to add. But I think we should have a, a discussion in the next couple of days, uh, maybe on Monday, so that um, I can roll it into the next version of the draft as well. Okay, sounds good. I'll uh, I'll keep this uh, action item open. Uh, the use cases I'll you know I'll give the update now. It's, uh, the past week I did not put much, but I did uh, mention that we have a draft that's uh, um, work in progress and uh, targeting uploading the initial version by IETF one twelve. Uh, so. I'll circulate the, the initial version to the interested parties so that they can review that. Uh, yeah, I don't think this 10.7 is accurate. Uh, I'll push it out to uh, 10.14. Okay. The uh, next action item we have, uh, I think YU is on the agenda today to talk about it. So I'll skip over that, but I'll just update the ETA today. And the uh, last one, no, not the last one. Uh, so there was an action item on Greg to close on the need for MPLS extended header for SFC OEM use cases. Um, so the, the status was last time need to sync up with the authors of RFC 8596, Greg. Uh, was this done? Uh, um, no, sorry. Uh, we were um, thinking of uh, you know, having it on the agenda, one of these sessions and uh, reporting back to the design team. Uh, no, this is not correct. Uh, so maybe push it out by a week or two. What is your uh, Yeah, just push it by a week. Thank you. No problem. And the last action item that's open uh, is on Matthew. It was to uh, start a requirement spec wiki. Uh, I, not, I, not, I haven't seen, honestly, Matthew, if he's... Uh... No, I haven't started that yet. Um, oh. Yeah, I assume we're, I mean, we're working on the draft at the moment, so um, I'm intending on posting something before the meeting next week. So um, presumably this wiki just needs to basically point to that. I think that's how I would do it. The 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 the, the, um, the drafts are a f fine way of um, expressing the um, the concerns. Yeah. What well, concerns is not the right thing, but the, the, the problem. Yeah. So Matthew, just just make a header in the wiki and say that there is a there is work in progress in the draft, and you can name the draft if you want. Okay. And say that it will be posted. Soon. 
Okay, um, that's it for the action items. Um, I'll save it so I don't lose the state. And I'll go back to the to the agenda of today. So we went over uh, item number one. Sorry, uh, and then I gave an update on the use case uh, report. Uh, Matthew was just talking about the requirements spec. Do you want to add anything, Matthew? On, on no, this? I'll, 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 I'll post something for the to, for, before the next meeting. Before the oh. next uh, DT meeting. Great. Okay. Sorry, folks. I have to drop now. I actually, have another call then to go to. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, you're not on the hook uh, if you want to go and. Yeah, I don't mind if you want to drop. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. No right. The next one um, is Kiriti. So, do you want to go and and, and talk about it? Um, sure. So, um, I have a first version of the nibble draft, first nibble draft. So, the basic idea for this draft is um, threefold. Um, to document the assignments for the first nibble that we've already uh, made. So, for example, 00 and 01 have uh, actually been put in an RFC, I think 4928, um, to, uh, to provide for a clear documentation of future assignments through the use of a registry. So, uh, the goal is to create a first MPLS first nibble registry and to provide a ma method of tracking usage by requiring more consistent documentation. So the, the uh, IANA requirements for this future registry um, is going to be standard, standard actions. I mean, it's a very small registry. I think we need to be very careful how we use it. Uh, so everything has to go through a standard stack RFC. So the basic thing that it talks about is why we use the first nibble or how we use the first nibble. Uh, the, the heuristic being if the first nibble contains a four or a six, then uh, we think it's an IP packet. And based on that, we are going to look for um, IP headers that will help load balancing. Turns out not to be a great heuristic because you know the, if, if you have an ethernet uh, payload right after the end of stack without a control word, then uh, you could actually confuse the first nibble, which is part of the OUI, uh, as uh, V4 or V6, and then do really bad things with the pseudo-wire. So there's also a, a draft, on an RFC that says, uh, if you're using ethernet, you must use a control word, or actually you should use a control word. Um, in this document, I want to actually up that uh, requirement. You must use a control word if you're not putting a, an IP packet right after that. We could go further and say, we just want to always use a control word after the end of stack so that, not a control word, what I call a post uh, stack header. So the post stack header is this four byte, uh, four octet field that would have, uh, a non four non six first nibble, so there's no chance of uh, confusing it with uh, IP, and then uh, you know you could have other stuff, um, and that way you'd never uh, confuse uh, 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 and whatever the uh, payload is with IP. Uh, so so this is the text that we're sort of uh, uh, um, discussing. I, I think I put some comments. Um, Kariti, that you can't actually guarantee that in a network that may have legacy traffic. True, true. Uh, this is going forward. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if the legacy of traffic exists in the network, you can't rely on that first nibble. The problem is that, as you said, there's well legacy implementations. Um, they are going to uh, add legacy traffic. Uh, mm -hmm. That the you know, they're, they're going to do what they do, right? What we right. try to do is um, say, going forward, uh, we're, you know, phase out the legacy traffic and phase out the legacy implementation. Uh, so, 
the 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 wording i think we can wordsmith that a little bit but uh, i'd like to go from assured which and and rfc 4928 um only said this for ethernet but i think in general we should say if there's not ip uh, going forward uh, implementations must uh you know in include a full stack header and uh we can uh, I'm fine with saying that. I'm just worried that it doesn't serve any purpose because I don't see how you stop a legacy packet going around the network. Oh, it, it will. And and we know that legacy packets will, I mean, so you get, they will be mishandled, misload balance and so on. But we can say going forward, we would we'll, uh, we'll like that not to happen anymore. Anyway, well, no, we can, no. can work with that further, um, but um, so 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 the idea of this this document is, like I said, those three things: to create a first naval registry, to um, to make sure that people document what they're doing better, and uh, to to make sure that future assignments are are. Um, organized through the registry. Um, one other thing I'll say is that um, there was some confusion about whether, uh, you know, this registry is the same or, or overlaps with um, uh, the uh, IP version number registry. And just because there are these two numbers in common, four and six, uh, these are actually completely separate registries. And if you if you say that um, we don't prom, you know promote you know, that hack that we have the heuristic that says look for the first nibble and if it's four or six then treat it as an IP packet and and find load balancing fields. If you say that we don't do that anymore, and if you do want to load balance better, either use an entropy label or a fat pseudo wire label, then. Uh, if there is an IPv7, which I don't think there can be because seven for some reason has been reserved, but whatever the next IP version is, this registry doesn't have to worry about that because you know going forward, nobody is going to continue that hack. And so uh, we will put in values that we're already using, including four and six, but everything else will be nothing to do with IP. So that two separate registries. So that's basically, um, uh, the intent of the draft is uh, a little more than that, but um, I will, you know, get through some of the other comments um, and then um, post a version of the draft uh, by next time so that um, we can, well, actually, I guess we have two weeks. Um, so uh, I don't know if we're going to discuss this next week or the week after. Uh, Sorry. Actually, yes, now I said next week, but uh, we haven't set the agenda yet, so it could be two weeks out. And um, if you want two weeks, if you want to have two weeks, you can tell me. No, I think a week is okay. Um, I, I do want to get this out and have people look at it. So um, we, you know, I, you know, I think that's a forcing function. Uh, so I'm okay with next week. Um, I just want to get through some of this. Um, so I think I've taken all of Stuart's um, uh, comments into, uh, you know, uh, that are rolled into the draft, except a few which I sent in the email. So we can uh, arm wrestle that a little bit more. And I have to do uh, Greg's as well. And um, that's the comments I have so far. So I think next week would be okay. Okay. I, I try to do that. I have one more question. In yeah. your registry in the draft, yeah. You say that zero is uh, the PV control word or the data control word, and zero one is the PV associated channel. It's However, uh, the um, let's see which RC is it. It's um, it's forty nine twenty eight. It actually says that anyone that want to guarantee that you don't. Uh, do um, uh, load balancing wrongly? Need should 
He said it's required, however, that the application depend on upon in order packet delivery restrict the first enable to uh, zero or, or one. So it's a little bit different from what you have. So uh, the the thing is, uh, first, what they say is it's recommended. So it's it's a should, not a must. No, it's required. Um, it's required. Well, it's required. Okay. Um, Hmm. I'll go back and read it, but it also says it's for Ethernet packets. So um, I think we need oh, to. No, 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 you're on the wrong place. This is uh, RSE 4928, uh, late in chapter three. It says it is required, however, that applications and it's any application that depend on in order packet delivery restrict the first nibble values to uh, uh, zero or six. One. Oh, okay. Huh? Go on. Pick one. Sorry. Sorry. It's zero or one. So you need to avoid the four and six. That's the basic. And to guarantee that uh, you actually don't get. Uh, uh, ECMP and other load balance wrongly, you are required to use zero or one only. I think it's for the control word, right? No. Sequence number? No, no, it's, it's um, no, I see it now. Um, yeah. So I, I, I was a part of writing this uh, RSC. I'm not married to it, I could change, but I can't live with not mentioning it. Uh, oh, no, no. So it's mentioned and it actually says it will update RFC 4928. Okay. Yeah. You have an update? So, no, no. I, um, yeah. Did I not post it? Uh, I thought I'd added it. Uh, oh, no. I, I didn't yeah, figure 49, out. 4928 is not here. It's neither a reference or an update. It should be reference. Oh, well, so it's a, it's a, it's a normative reference in the last version. I have to figure out how to make, uh, you know, you can put something in the header that says we'll update, uh, 49, you know, some previous ROC. I don't know how to do that in markdown or cram down. But but that's the goal. But it is a reference. So um I think you just uh, use the updates keyword. Oh, okay. Okay. I I'll I'll figure it out. It'll only take you a second to find out if it works or not. Yeah, yeah. But it's not listed as an uh, the one you sent out is not listed oh, as Oh no, I a... beg your pardon. Do do we put it in the boilerplate or does the ROC editor put it there? We we ha you certainly have to put it in the abstract. Yes. Okay. Anyway, yeah, I always so try just using updates, which is the keyword. It, it is in the abstract. It is in the abstract and it is a reference. Now hopefully so I sent out two versions. I sent out a version um and then uh, Stuart gave it a, a thorough read, and then I made updates on based on that and sent out a second version. That second version has um, the reference as a normative reference to 4928, and it has a line in the abstract that says this memo, if published, could update RC 4928. So, um, but I will go back and uh, so I think I misread RC 20, 4928. But um, I, I think the idea that um, RFC 20, 4928 uh, really wants to do is say avoid four and six, uh, but it is much more prescriptive and says you should only use zero and one. This update will say you can use anything except four and six, uh, but you need to put that in a registry. I, I want to discuss that. I, don't, I think we were, were over that with yours quite quite carefully and we actually reached the conclusion that it's only zero and one that actually uh, if you have a requirement that you are do not doing load balancing you need to use uh, zero or one 
Maybe at the time you were concerned that, you know, another version of IP might come around and then someone else would do something, um, by, you know, uh, so, so say the next version of IP. I, I don't, I wasn't in that discussion. I, I don't see why we should only do zero and one, but. Um, That's another discussion. I'm discussing what actually in the RLC as now, and we need to take care of that. Um, which are the 4928? Yeah, 4928 says something very explicit. It yes, says one, zero, or one. So if we want to go away from that, then we need to actually uh, document that pretty carefully. Well, it says in the previous paragraph, thus at a minimum, the chosen format must disallow the values four and six in the first nibble of their payload. But then it goes on to say it is required that uh, applications that depend on in order packet delivery restrict the first nibble to zero and one. I don't understand the rationale for that, but uh, all it does say it is uh, some future version of IP. So, what I want to do in the first nibble draft is say, if you want to do load balancing, stop these hacks. Um, use entropy label or fat pseudo wire label. And uh, so there is no implementation today that looks at the first label and says, oh, it's value 12, this must be some version of IP because nobody knows what it looks like. So the only hack is for four and six. I think everything else should be open. And so this update would say everything else is open, but you need to stop using this hack. A, a question, uh, Kiriti and Loa. Uh... I, I see people are using any uh, something other than zero and one. Uh, am I missing something in the yeah. discussion? In fact, yeah, yeah. We, we we wrote this text in two thousand and seven, and the world has moved yeah. on a lot in the last, um, gosh, fifteen years. So fourteen years. Yeah. So so we are already in violation with that statement that Loa is refer referencing. Not well, really. Uh, okay. That's no, so the the beer is. There is a uh, beer using. Uh, beer uses five. Um, NSH uses zero or two. So, that, okay, that's, uh, that's let me fine, let's, but it's not the exactly the same thing. So, uh, I, I'd like to step back. I, I, you know, what I'm what I'm proposing is that we have a registry, and in that registry we say four and six are special. We're just not going to use that. Everything else is open to to make that work. Future implementations should not use this hack of four and six or something else to load balance. What they should do is use an entropy label or a fat pseudo wire label. Uh, four and six will be preserved for legacy, but if there is an IP version seven, version eight, version twelve, um, that's not ever going to you know nobody. I mean. People who use that for load balancing are in violation of this ROC. Uh, so, yeah. I think we are in violent agreement on what you are saying. Okay. What I'm saying is that the paragraph I read from 4928 needs to be updated and we need yes. to sure. actually, I mean, yes. create a new version of 4928. No, no, no. What we need to do is to update it in this other draft. Yeah. Um, and point uh, and, um, and and use the normal update procedure. I don't think we right. need to spin a new Maybe version of the text. Uh, I don't remember uh, the, um, the 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 um, uh, requirement language. How how we can change that? I will go back and check. But I, th well, I think if you put updated by, then. Um, then that's all that's necessary to bring the old draft into um, into the modern world. You just have to say that this draft changes the following um, text within uh, forty nine twenty eight. Okay, I go back and check out. You're the right. The update list has another item in it, but you must publish a draft at the same class in order to do this. So this will have to be a standards track draft in order to change uh, 4928. Yeah, and currently I think I've... Anyway, so that's not the problem. Yeah, this is, um, I've, I've put it down as standards track. Um, 
But I, I will go. I go back and check explicitly uh, so we get it right. Uh, I was kind of convinced that we actually needed to do a uh, a respin in the in the URC, but uh, it might not be it. Well, I don't mind which we do, um, but. Um... Um, I don't think we re are required to write a new RSC. I think it is sufficient to um, uh, to do the update. Okay, fine. Um, but what I will do is pull in this text from uh, from RSC forty nine twenty eight into the new draft, and then say yes. it will be changed in the following way, and uh, and then you know the RSC. Yeah, I, I think think whatever. probably you need to do it with a. Um, the following text um, and quote it is replaced by and the following yes. text, which yes, so it's an edit note if you like, but in another draft. Right, right, yeah. So yeah, uh, I'll do that. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that's the general idea of this personable um, yeah. um, draft to create a registry uh, to formalize things a little bit and and to put in these uh, recommendations, which uh, actually are more like requirements. Um, that um, if you want to do load balancing, um, please stop using this hack and use an entropy label or a fat pseudo y label. And um, uh, please put a post stack header. Uh, so it doesn't have to be zero or one, but a post stack header, non four, non six. Um, which will uh, make sure that your packets don't go astray. So the only thing is that you can't actually stop people doing it. They didn't ask permission in the IETF, if you see what I mean, to do it in the first yeah. place. But, so but I, what we can say is you're in violation of this ROC. Yes, I suppose so, yes. I mean, they can do anything. They can just drop every other packet if they feel like. I mean, Well, yeah, they're going to do a load of DPI anyway, so. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, at least I think we will um, have uh, maybe to some extent a turn for the sins of the past by saying, hey, we, we're now telling you how to do it right. We're telling you what went wrong with this uh, quick and dirty hack. Um, and I mean, 4928 tries a little bit, right? And uh, that doesn't mean everyone's doing it, but. Well, no, that's why we had to write an RFC a long time later. Uh, just a couple of years ago to um, uh, clarify the, uh, the the requirement. Yeah. They were real operator networks that were getting into trouble. And uh, they got into trouble when two things happened. One, the rack started to issue uh, Ethernet addresses that started with a four or and a six. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a, 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 and also um, privacy MAC addresses started to go into the wild where people picked random ones. And at one stage, there were there was an attempt by some operators to persuade the rack not to issue Ethernet addresses <laughs> that started with four and six, and that caused a bit of a storm, which we had to address with an RFC. They make money on those. Come on, you can't tell them not to do that. <laughs> um, so, which is this RFC? Um... Oh, it's the pseudo. Um, I think you quoted it, didn't you? You quoted it in your text. Okay. Okay, I was worried that there's maybe another one. Certainly in my, certainly I'm sure I included a note in my notes about what it was. Oh, 8469. Uh, that's the one, that's the one, that's yes, the one. And that's that happened one. because yeah. we were pressured to write it. Yes, yes. Uh, and that's where, sorry, that's where I was saying it's only for Ethernet. Uh, 4928 yes. doesn't say only Ethernet, but this one does. Yeah, there's nothing else out there really that doesn't use the suit that, 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 that uh, uses no control word. I, I don't know of any other. Greg, can you remember all the strange ATM ones that don't obey the proper control word rules? I seem to remember there was an ITU uh, um, ATM uh, draft that did something funny. Yeah, that, that I don't remember. Frankly, I never worked on this, um, any pseudo wire with ATM. So I should probably say that this updates um, 84.69 as well, right? Um, yeah, in the sense that it has wider scope than the, than, right. than the, yes. Yeah. Okay. 
or it extends it to increase its scope would be probably be what I would say. Yeah, but I don't think they use that word. They just say update. And whatever yeah. update is. Okay, um, so a few things for me to do um, that I will do over the next few days. Uh, so by next time, hopefully I, so the question I, I guess is, um, should I just post this um, or should I, I mean, once we've gone through our reviews uh, among the authors uh, so that everyone in the design team can, can look at it and uh, understand what we're talking about. So Kiriti, there was a uh, um, GitHub account for MPLS working group. Would you want to put it up there as well? Yeah, so I went there, but I don't uh, know. Okay, when we talk offline, um, we have a meeting on Monday. Uh, maybe okay. you can tell me how I can. I can definitely help you put it up. No yeah. problem. Okay. okay. So so I'll do that, um, and then I'll send a pointer. So we don't have to publish the draft. Um, I will make the updates, push it into GitHub, uh, send a pointer so uh, folks on the design team can look at it. And then we can uh, go from there. Okay, sounds good. All right. Um, uh, we unfortunately I have to drop, um, so I'm going to uh, go. I have a different meeting, but um, I you're, you're recording this because I want to catch uh, how you use uh, discussion. I am recording. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll talk to you guys next week. Okay, Kriti. See you. Okay. Take care. Okay. Uh, for you, you're up next on the header parsing in hardware. Right. Let me share my screen. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. I can. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, how the uh, pack header is parsed and processed in uh, especially in hardware. Uh, since we are uh, start to uh, talking about how to design new um, labels on the new headers, and so it makes sense to understand the real hardware architecture um, before we uh, go too far. And hopefully this kind of understanding can help us uh, to uh, to give us some guidance uh, for the new header design. Um, so today uh, uh, for the basic based uh, folding shapes, we uh, have uh, uh, two types, basically the less flexible and uh, also the fully programmable uh, ASICs. Um, but they all they both uh, follow the similar uh, hardware architecture. Uh, if you can, uh, look at the left side, is actually a, a trident from a uh, chip from Broadcom, and uh, the right side figure uh, is a high level diagram of the P4 programmable uh, chip. Uh, but for both, you can see uh, they have a, a front end parser. Uh, which is responsible uh, for uh, passing and uh, extract all the header fields that need to be processed uh, in the chip. And uh, then all the headers and only the, 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 the extracted header fields are actually fed into the processing pipeline. And uh, in the pipeline, in this pipeline, the, those header fields are either uh, updated or deleted or some new header fields, uh, new headers add, inserted, uh, added. So, and uh, after all these uh, modifications and updates, and finally, there's a, a module called Deparser. So the basic Deparser use uh, all the updated, updated headers to reconstruct the so the new header of the outgoing package. And uh, this new header will combine with the original uh, payload part of the package. Uh, so a new outgoing egress package is generated and uh, sent out to the corresponding interface. So this uh, basically we can see there are three parts, parsing and processing and the deparsing. 
So first, let's look at the parser part. So especially for the um, programmable parser, um, basically um, for all the header fields, uh, header formats, right? We we can describe that as a directed graph. So in the bottom of this slide, you can see an example, right? A, that's a directed graph, and uh, uh, the parser basically uh, implements this uh, as a finite state machine. So each header, each header is a basically is a state in this state machine. For example, one MPS la label is considered a header, and but the entire IP header is one header, and VLAN ID, and the IPv6 extension header, and the HTLV options can all be considered a one header uh, in the context of the uh, finite state machine. And uh, so, so each um, packet parsing actually just follow it. So for each particular pack, uh, incoming packet, uh, the parsing process will follow a single pass on this graph. And so you can see this is an inherently uh, sequential process. And uh, basically, based on this uh, uh, state machine, there's no way to handle multiple next states in parallel. So you, you always just follow one single pass because uh, in one package, you um, even uh, you have uh, multiple headers, uh, you, you have to pass them one by one uh, in the order they appear in the package. So uh, parsing uh, is uh, actually never the performance bottleneck. Um, as of uh, 2013, based on the some uh, re uh, uh, report uh, on the chip, um, they can uh, use a one gigahertz clock rate and uh, support 32 bit uh, header data uh, one cycle. So, which means um, a single parser can has a throughput of 32 gigabit per uh, per second. And usually, uh, in the for example, in the P4 uh, chip, uh, the in implement 16 such uh, uh, parser instances, then it means uh, the total overall throughput is of 512 gigabit per second. So, well, well, wait a moment here. Wait a moment here, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, if you have are these multiple, are these 16 instances looking at a single interface, mm -hmm. uh, then no, you have to work. What, what? Uh, work on the different packets. Yeah, no, no, I'm not about different packets. Are they working on the same interface or different interfaces? Uh, it's, uh, I think it's for the entire, uh, for all the interfaces. Right, because the, the problem with multiple instances, because we built, I built, well, I, I worked on a router that did do this. And uh, the problem you have is that you have to have a recombination thing which can stall the parsers. And you need to show that because otherwise you'll get misordering. Uh, misordering because uh, uh, the I think they might bind each parser to a particular interface. Uh, it's really so, important to understand that yeah, because uh, uh, well that well that well that has the consequence of course that you can't go faster than thirty two gigabits on an interface, which is perhaps not enough for a lot of routers. Uh, I, I I I need to verify that, but my uh, I, I think it's uh, you know uh, each each parser should bind to a particular set of interface. So which means uh, there will be no uh, out of order uh, issues at least for the parser part. So but I need to verify that. Okay. Can so, I uh, jump in there as well? So the um. My understanding would be that uh, if the state machinery in this example has more than 16 states, mm -hmm. then you would basically, uh, you know, run out of performance, right? No, uh, let me uh, finish this. Um, uh, it, it, 
let me talk about these slides first, okay, uh, to help you understand better. Um, so, so basically, the aggregated uh, throughput is one twelve gigabit per second. But now let's uh, translate that to the um, packet uh, uh, to the packet throughput performance. Uh, in the uh, figure I show here, you can see uh, if I assume one terabit per second uh, throughput, and if uh, each packet is uh, on average is 320 bytes. So if we make this assumption, then um, if we have a, from this figure, you can see the parser throughput is much higher uh, than the than the required throughput. The, the baseline, I, I show that one, uh, the gray line is actually baseline. So which means if you can, um, uh, the packet only come and that, uh, that throughput, but the packet, uh, the parser packet throughput is much, much higher, right? I also so what, show what work. If a, what if it's a VOIP sized packet? VOIP? Voice over IP. The sort of thing you find in a telephone network. Uh, you can look at the right side, actually show a pretty uh, complex um, parsing graph. No, 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 that's not the question. Um, the question the, is that the, I, the, I, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't know if it was a, right. so, uh, yeah. So uh, 320 bytes is not an, is, is really a long packet compared to one that you find in a. I said on average, actually, based on the statistics on average, the, the packet length right. is much longer than this. It's a, at least a 600 or so. Yeah, there are a lot of short packets, but here I see it's average. And they'll say, so, uh, let's just assume average packet size is 320. Well, that's not necessarily correct if we are looking at the actual data in the network. You have two peaks, uh, one on the order of uh, 50, 60 bytes, so that includes all sorts of uh, transport acknowledgements and uh, well, short payload. And Stuart, to your question about the voice, it's typically below 100 bytes. Yeah. Then you yeah. have a yeah. light peak for uh, all sorts of video related things. Those typically come on the order of uh, 1000 plus minus. Right. 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 So uh, here is the average. Right. Yeah, but you, I don't think average does you any good. You have long packets, but uh, on average, there. No, I don't think that does you any good because you, you. Exactly. You, yes. You've got yeah. to be able to. You've got to design for the pathological case. Otherwise, you end up with stall and drop. Yeah, all the chip design for the average case. Nobody can design for the shortest packet possible case. That's a, just a. Well, that's an assumption. Also, that's an, also that's, that's unrealistic. Never. That never happened. Well, that's an assertion. And I'm not sure we should design our architectures nobody, around it. Nobody designed their chips based on that. Uh, well, if we look into statistics, there are far more small packets than large ones. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, on average, I uh, you can check. Uh, I check a lot of research uh, report. On average, it's a multiple hundreds of bytes per packet. That's on average. Because there's a lot of uh, uh, short packets, but there's oh, a lot of uh, uh, long packets. So is is that what goes on in a cell site? What is that? What goes on in a cell site? I mean, the most interesting piece. What well, there are, there are two interesting places. But to if, uh, if you're in a cell site, you can see uh, the throughput will never be one terabit. Here, actually, uh, I I assume that some aggregation point you have a terabit per second throughput. Okay. That's a very, very it won't be a terabit. I have no well, so, idea what it will be, actually. I don't I, think you can assert I, I, that. I, I, here, I, I assume the chip throughput is one terabit per second, and the average packet size is 320 bytes. Okay, so, so here's my basic uh, assumption. If you look at the sales size, then maybe that's 100 gig. Um, uh, if it's 100 gig, I, I would get throughput. Then, in, even in the worst case, you have uh, only 100 million packets per second throughput. That's a uh, much much smaller than this. Then that is a much easier problem to solve. Even you assume you all the packets are small size. So 
So, so here you can see, uh, even I have uh, up to 32 level of uh, headers. Uh, the parser, parser throughput still outperform the actual um, required throughput uh, for the chip. So, uh, which means that the parser actually uh, is not a concern of the performance. Um, we actual, uh, actually, uh, what should be uh, uh, concerned more is uh, actually uh, packet processing. And uh, um, so in the right side, actually show a, a complex parsing graph, right? And uh, uh, it, it actually covers many uh, services we have today, uh, like the, all the VLAN, uh, uh, different VLAN and MPS labels um, up to here, it shows up to five uh, layer of MPS labels and the IPv4, V6, and after that, some uh, layer layer four protocols, and also some other tunnels like GRE and MA GRE. So it's all covered by this graph. And in this example, the worst case, the longest pass is only involved 12 headers. So if you look at the left performance figure, you will see it's a you know the the parser uh, it is performance is never a concern for, even for this very complex graph. And uh, if we, we assume we can support up to sixteen headers, then it implies we can do the Ethernet plus nine up to nine MPS labels, and plus four extension headers, um, plus uh, IP header and uh, also the TCP UDP header. So this uh, account, account for 16 headers. You can easily to handle that. Uh, with, uh, I think what you're saying here is that a header is for you something that uh, you know can be captured with a fixed length parsing. Yeah. So in the case of something like an MPLS header or you know MPLS label stack header, um, it would be you know a, a maximum size. Uh, label stack header, right? So uh, many vendors are are saying how many you know labels in a label stack they can do, or equally in an SRV six header, the maximum number they do. And so then these parsers are actually you know uh, trying to parse the maximum uh, supported size in that, right? Uh, so there are two issues. Um, why is the number of uh, headers or, or the level of headers you can process. Uh, here, I, all I mean is, okay, even you have a lot of uh, uh, headers, it can still be uh, handled by the existing technology. There's no um, um, performance concern. But uh, another bigger concern is actually the, the header buffer depths. So that, just, that means how many total bytes can be handled by the chip. That's a that's a more serious concern, and uh, it's, it's a real, I, I will talk about that later. But not here, um, here I just show okay. If even you have a up to thirty two level of uh, headers, still there's no no performance concern. Uh, even in the two thousand thirteen, the technology can already handle that. If we look at today's technology, you can do much better than that. So. Don't worry about uh, number. Well, of, uh, if you if you had what we might from the protocol side consider to be a single header, but it had uh, a variable length elements, then yeah. so, so yeah. that would account uh, for multiple parser stages. Um, no, if you can count, so in each state, uh, each header just just means based on the if you can based on the current state you can reach the next header then, then that's one state. So for example, if you have variable sized header, then you you are in this state. Then in this state, you based on some field, you know the size of this header. Then you just uh, use use this information. You can reach to the next header. Then that is fine, but then you fine. haven't then you haven't uh, parsed. The variable length header fields themselves. So, if you have a multiple variable length header, that then each is considered a header. 
you have to do them to uh, pass them. So, so, so let's say, for example, in the extension headers, uh, yeah. if, if that is a permittable term here in our mm -hmm. design team, right? So yeah. uh, some proposals would have TLDs in them. Every T uh, um, and, and length, of course, you know, um, potentially yeah. being different. If you wanted to parse them um, for for you know every TLD element into a a separate you know um, data structure, um, then that would require for each of them a separate stage in the state right. machine. So each yeah yeah exactly each TLD will be a header will be considered as a header as a yeah, state. So that's why I, that's why I'm I'm a little bit hesitant about the term header right so. Uh, maybe right. that's not the, wrong, so, the right so, term yeah. in the state machine. Yeah, I, I said we, we need to consider the context here. See, mm -hmm. For the state machine, each header means just each state. Okay, you can, you can say that's a, that will be a, a state. Each each TLV will be a state in the state machine. So each TLV is a header in your, uh, yeah, in your design? Yeah in, yeah, in my sense, it's a header, right. Okay. Uh, I have a question now uh, yeah. before you move on. Yeah. Uh, so, so the the label stack is is not one header. It's not uh, one header. It's uh, each no, label it's, it's is a like, header. Yeah, because also it is uh, you know it's each one header. Nice label. You need to make a decision if you will find an, another label, or you already reach the end of the um, the, the label stack, and also because uh, uh, for this. Uh, State machines, you in each cycle, you just take in 32 bits, which means, uh, okay, it's just like, um, uh, it's, it's just a, about size of an MPS label, right? Then, then uh, it's uh, very naturally, you just uh, uh, treat each label as a state. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then what's the parsing result? The parsing, parsing results actually just a, uh, all the uh, relevant header fields that will will be needed by the following processing pipeline and also uh, will be used uh, for the departure to reconstruct the package and in the in the context of the uh, programmable uh, switch uh, all the passing uh, result is put into a uh, a, a, a architecture uh, structure uh, data structure called a package ve header vector or PHV, uh, you can see the right side is just a, just like many different sized containers, and each container can hold uh, some uh, header fields, uh, as well as some other um, uh, necessary metadata to describe uh, um, the some uh, keep some state or describes the the, the presence of the, some uh, particular header fields. And uh, so, all all the information that actually can be seen by the following uh, packet processing pipeline is this uh, uh, packet header vector. And uh, so the the processing pipeline is just uh, actually just uh, update uh, the uh, this uh, this P, uh, PHV. It can modify the value in it and uh, Use a value in it to do some table lookups, and or or uh, delete some of them, or insert some new new words into this vector. And uh, finally, the, a very important part is that is this will be used by the departure to reconstruct the package, which means that uh, you know uh, uh, without this, you 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 don't know what's a outgoing packet cell would be like. And another um, significant constraint is of this that uh, usually it has just a fixed size. The number of uh, uh, containers uh, is limited. Uh, for example, uh, in the uh, Torfino chip, um, the, the overall size of this vector is 4K bits. And uh, it's also used by both ingress uh, and egress, so uh, which uh, means we we have to uh, this this resource basically limits the number of uh, uh, headers or or depths of headers we can 
uh, support in our in the, in the, in the chip. If you want to, uh, if you, in your design, you actually require more resource than this, it will fail to map to this, uh, uh, this chip. I think the, the main issue is that the, um, uh, that the addressing later on by the P4 code seems to be for, you know, a particular header field you're looking for would be um, at a particular absolute address here, right? So. Which basically it's, it's node address. It's just uh, the value here, and also some uh, indicators maybe tell you, okay, this IP. Um, for example, if you have an IP header passed here, and uh, it will have some indicator to tell you uh, there's IP before header, for example. Right. Now, but let's you say know, I, okay, right. Um, but let's say I have I have two headers um, consecutively. Right, each of the headers could have a maximum size of, let's say, uh, 256 uh, bytes. Then, um, uh, but you know, in reality, I would uh, uh, never have, you know, both headers be 256 bytes. I would still have to account for uh, 512 bytes for both of these headers statically in the uh, packet header vector, right? Uh, sorry, I, I didn't fully catch your question. I, I mean, this is only for one packet. Yes, for one packet, right? Yeah. So, but yeah. now I'm saying that uh, my my packet header structures are such that I have a sequence of variable length headers, mm -hmm. and I, I be, because ultimately the P4 code would be accessing um, the packet header um, uh, fields through yeah. you know explicit addressing. That means that you know um, a particular um, header here in the packet header uh, vector. Would be at a particular address. That means that uh, when uh, when the uh, headers are variable length. Address. I, I don't know. You here. There's no address in this uh, vector. It's just uh, the name of the. For example, it's just a uh, the uh, the name and the location of each uh, um, each header fields in this uh, vector. So right. if you in, know in the have this, uh, if you in know you. Code, I'm trying to look at let's say yeah. DSCP value in the IP header, right? So that's mm -hmm. what I'm programming in my P4 okay. code. That okay. would basically do um, an, an access uh, to the memory ad address of the packet header vector where the DSCP is. No, no, there's a not a memory address. It's just, just you just use a name. The mapping is in the programming the language. Yeah, in, in the programming pro language. In the programming language, you don't use a address. Yes. You just yeah. use a name. You so, just uh, say, okay, I just use a DHCP uh, bits. Yes. And exactly. it's nowhere right. to get it from the vector. Right. Then. So, but in, in the hardware itself, that is obviously, you know, a read access to that packet header vector uh, field, you know, where the DSCP has been parsed into. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so then the question is, you know, how can we imagine that as basically access to a register or a memory field, right? And I'm saying it's at a fixed address. So I was trying to explain how this translates into the memory utilization in the face of variable length headers, right? So okay. it's basically- Here, um, it's actually not in memory. This is pure register. That's so fine, but that, that is just a register memory then, right? So everything is a memory. Whatever stores, stores data, you can call it a memory. So call it register. Uh, mm -hmm. register vector or so, but it's at a fixed uh, fixed offset then in that register um, vector. Yeah. And that means that for every variable length header, we have to account in the packet header vector for the maximum size of that uh, um, particular field. So, so basically when you're parsing uh, par par parse this, you have to be able to Put all of those, um, uh, fit all of those into this vector. If you cannot fit it, as you already failed. So the, oh, the, it's the other way around. The packet header vector has to be large enough so that um, the largest size variant for every header fits together. Uh, yeah, but uh, but here you can see the largest container is 32 bits, but if you have a field, um, larger than this, you can use multiple. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when you have 
headers like, like an MPLS header that has variable length or SRV6 similarly or any other header mm -hmm. that has variable length, you basically need to make sure that the sum of the largest length of all the headers you may have sequentially, um, or, or all the headers that you can parse, the largest size of them fits into the packet header vector. There is there is no dynamic allocation of the packet header vector here. No, no, you have to fit all of them yes. because uh, you will use this to in reconstruct the packet. All of them must be already here. You know, that's fine, but that is because there is very simple addressing used, right? There is basically, you know, what you what you're calling a register is still, you know, um, just a, a particular memory location in that packet header vector. Um, yeah, I'm, well, I'm not sure I understand the question, but uh, uh, but uh, it's for sure all the headers you will use to construct your packet will be must be uh, in this vector you cannot uh, you know um mix them up if you they are not here um uh, in the departure so uh, which means um uh if your pipeline or processing pipeline need to process this header then you, they have to be put in this vector after passing otherwise um you know, uh, the 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 whole compiling process will fail. You can it just tell you, okay, sorry, you require too much resource beyond the availability, so uh, the the chip cannot support that. Yeah, and and I'm 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 just wondering if 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 that type of design, which translates you know variable length into a static maximum length. Um, variable length is okay. Uh, you have variable length, but when you reach this header, you still extract some fields from this header, then try to put them put them into this vector. As long as, long as you can accommodate them, it's okay. But if you the size is, uh, is uh, larger, then it, it fails. How does it deal with variable length items in there? Uh, maybe I've missed that. Well, okay, that's what I was trying to explain, right? So if you, let's say, um, you want to you give me an example. Let me, let me give the example, a t right? a, a, an, an SRV6 TLV. Right, if you want to support, for example, packet header parsing of, let's say, sequentially, you know, uh, encapsulated into each other, right? Four times IP headers mm -hmm. with um, SRV6 headers, right? So then you would need to uh, uh, allocate as much packet header vector space as the maximum size IPv6 headers plus the maximum size um, SRV6 headers uh, would require. No, that's, that's... I, don't, I don't do that. Instead, I just, uh, for the SRV6, I put all the uh, other header, base header fields already in the vector. Then I will examine each extension header as a new header. and. Uh, for each extended header, what's a what? So you have to take a new cycle through your thing for each each new header. Right, right. Each extended header is a new header. For but, my that's fine. but no, it's not just a new header. It's mm -hmm. a new cycle in the parser, isn't it? Yeah. Because you yeah. can do multiple yeah. headers at once here, you except see. when any of them are variable. You see, each is a variable. Then I just uh, okay for this uh, current. Uh, Header, I just extract the, all the necessary field to the vector. To the so we haven't talked here at all about then, parallelization. Then I get to the next header, right? Then to go to next stage to continue the process. Right. So each stage is a cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Not necessarily one cycle because um, sometimes you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it's at least one cycle. Yeah. But let's, Stuart. Let's keep the the parallelization. Um, problem out of the picture for now. That's another. You know, I thought that's what he was doing problem. with this picture. So no, no there's no parallel uh, parallelism. No, here. no, keep the parallelization out of. Uh, we we can get to that later. I think the main part I'm trying to drive home is that there is a very you know static allocation of memory even in the face of variable length headers. You're always allocating in the packet header vector the maximum size for each variable length he header. Right. Right. Nope. So you're, you're simply converting a, a linked list of compact header fields into a, a sequence of arrays, so to speak, uh, where the array size is kind of the maximum size of every header. Right. 
Uh, and by the way, you probably don't know what that is. I suppose you. Know, I suppose you could know. No, no, that's 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 the discussion we had all the while, right? Mm -hmm. Remember the SRV six discussion where basically there was the long fight: how long SRV six headers need to be supported, and different vendors had different yeah. opinions based on you know what their hardware were supporting. Oh, I yeah. I mean, I suppose you've got to assume that whenever you see anything, it's two fifty six bytes, don't you? Yeah, but that is or maybe, or maybe sixteen hundred, maybe maybe sixty four thousand bytes. This is the point. If we are designing. Um, you know, a, a network architecture in which we have a sequence of headers and these, these headers can have variable length. And we are certain that the maximum header will never be longer than 512 bytes. It still doesn't mean that we can parse um, all these headers into a 512 byte packet header vector. Because yes. it's not parsed dynamically that 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 packet header vector size might need to be four, five, six times as large, depending on the maximum size of each possible header uh, combined. No, no, no. It's just a uh, your first part of your statement is true um, because uh, it depends on how many uh, different uh, header fields you need to hold uh, in this vector. But that's only for one packet each. You know, you, 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 for example, you have a multiple possible packet formats. Uh, hang on. How, how important and is this to a discussion on MPLS, which is what we're having? MPLS labels are a fixed size, aren't they? I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a hard uh, uh, Yeah, I'm trying to understand actually whether we're sort of really deep in the weeds here what? because okay. this is uh, an MPLS I, design meeting. Yeah. I, I do want to uh, uh, remind of the time. Uh, we are already uh, uh, out of time. Um, if you want, uh, you know, highlight any last points while you. I, I don't think I can finish it this time because I have some uh, important point to make. I, I, I do want to ask the audience, is this something uh, you want to spend more time today on? I'm, I'm willing to you know, stay. Uh, me, either me or Loa. Uh, Loa, you're uh, you're okay to stay. Let's first get a poll. Uh, is this something you want to continue to discuss today? I, I think it will be useful to focus on MPLS rather than the general case, though. I agree. Okay. Um. Anyone else thinks this is uh. A good topic to continue on today, and they want to go beyond the allotted time. Okay, I, I don't see many uh, excitement there, but I'll give you maybe a couple of minutes uh, to talk about uh, Stewart's concern. Um, why you fix okay. headers, please, and then we wrap it up. Thanks. Yeah, you have some someone saying yes in the in the chat. I did not I think, look at the chat. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's for your question. Uh, I okay. I I did mention that, you know, I I'll give uh why you a couple of minutes to yeah. Talk okay. About. So so basically uh, based on the uh all the proposals so far. Uh, it seems uh, we have uh, two um, major new ideas to uh, design uh, new either new labels or new headers. One of them is to use a, a, a I, I call here catalog. Uh, it, uh, it might be some uh, new uh, uh, flex or some other in uh, some other form. Basically, it's used to tell okay what what uh, other headers uh, follow. Uh, follow this uh, particular uh, special label, and uh, this maybe people think this uh, uh, this is good for the uh, parsing performance, but actually it's not. Uh, it doesn't help parsing. Uh, actually, it, it, it's useless. You cannot even uh, write a P4 parser to support that to, to make it have any use. Um, well, wait a moment. P4 is not the gate to how we design any protocol. 
Uh, okay, I just use P, one P4, example. P4, I I will if, also if, if P four is a limitation, then it's P four that has to yeah, be Yeah, yeah. If you, you it, 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 I, all I mean here is uh, similar. Even you have a hardware uh, a fixed function basic, it's uh, similar um, because uh, they still follow the similar um, parser design. And uh, so so unless here I said unless the purpose is uh, to tell the parser to stop immediately. You, you don't need to look further. Other other than that, this catalog is useless. The second uh, um, uh, new new uh, idea is to use a pointer uh, to 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 tell you can okay you can directly jump to somewhere uh, some later bytes uh, to 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 skip some some uh, headers in the middle, and also it doesn't help parsing. Uh, unless the parser can also can stop immediately, maybe the the pointer tell, tell um, uh, you know you you don't just uh, uh, your parser can stop here because uh, no further uh, headers are uh, of concern by the packet processing pipeline. And uh, so basically, uh, based on the parser architecture, these two ideas uh, have very uh, little use. Uh, to the actual to improve any performance, and uh, so the the key uh, takeaway here is uh, actually the the actual header processing is a bottleneck, but not the header you, parsing. And, well, you 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 one question about this uh, pointer thing in yeah. your graph in your directed graph, you can bypass uh, hops, right? Yeah, yeah. It, so. It, it, what, why don't you think of the pointer as a bypass, you know, from one header directly bypass, you know, these, uh, you know, multiple. Yeah. For the reason of the deparsing, for example, you have a header A, B, C, and A has a pointer to C, then you still need to pass A and B and C because necessarily other, otherwise exactly. on, the, on the on the output side you cannot reconstruct the package well ha hang on a second it all depends on whether you, you, you know, so this is there's this whole sort of class of processes that seem to be rebuilding the packet um, on the output side instead yep. of just pushing the front of the packet which is how they used to do it and there are there are issues uh, and it's a pity Matthew isn't here because he gave me quite a good example in the week of mistakes that some of these chips are making because they try and rebuild the packet rather than leave it intact. So it's really, I think, I think Matthew had some good examples of of um, some of these modern chips breaking, uh, doing, uh, causing operational failures because they rebuilt the packet rather than just looking at the bits they were supposed to to look at and ignoring the rest. But I think that is a general problem of, you know, the risk of um, uh, that, that you get with variable data structures, right? When, when, when no, even with fixed data structures, he, he had an MPLS example. Well, it would be good to, to, to get some more explicit uh, information about that because I'd be, you know, un unhappy to try to just um, uh, reduce the, the flexibility we want to achieve by, um, you know, um, with, with, without having any explicit proof of what it is or what could be so, done about it, right? So, so, so I think it's very reasonable for us to modify what we do on the basis of physics. It is not reasonable for us to modify the design on the basis of two bespoke um, um, design, uh, parser designs. Well, I don't think this is too bespoke, right? I'd, I'd, I'd rather think that, you know, um, P4 doesn't even make it uh, as simple as, as possible to avoid uh, programming and other mistakes, right? So, for example, um, you can't deparse automatically a variable length chains. You you need to program the deparser. Whereas, if, mm -hmm. if you got fixed uh, uh, um, fixed length uh, chains, then then you then you know P four can deparse it by itself, right? So those those are the things missing, mm. right? Um, so that's that that's a little bit I think distinguishing between what we feel is a reasonable lowest common denominator of what the hardware should be able to do and um, basically thinking that the p4 language itself is not flexible enough to make that really um, error uh, error prone but again you know i mean uh, i i 
I would strongly resist here saying avoid TLV type headers, right? I think we're way past that. Um, and um, as much as, for example, the current um, data structures that um, IU was showing here for the, the, the packet uh, uh, header vector, right, um, are not uh, size optimized, they are perfectly well capable of handling TLV type headers. And as much as P4 is makes it really, you know, difficult today to deparse TLV type headers. Uh, right. I think that that is a, a limitation of the hardware, but just of the programming language. Uh, right, and, and we so, shouldn't be constrained by the yes, by that programming it's language. It's not uh, difficult to, to parse. It's just uh, make it more, um, you know, um, it's not um, as simple as, uh, uh, you know, it's just a uh, header chains. You, 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 if you have variable size, it's just a means more calculation. You need to write the code yourself for the deparsing, which is which is kind of bad uh, because the the deparser, in the same way as the parser, uh, should be a state machinery that can be programmed into the chip, right? So um, right now, it it needs to be a a, a program part um, of 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 the normal P4 uh, stages, not a, of of the deparser state, right? So they've got a limited deep parser based on the protocols they had in the past right so that's 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 the limitation but so i i i wouldn't agree to to avoiding tlv type headers i don't think that that is reasonable anymore um because that's, a, that's a, if if we can do the simple header chain there's no reason why you want to use tlv as a basically that's a that will just add one more passing cycles in the header state. That's a yeah, but but you 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 made the, the 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 point long and hard that um, you know the additional um, uh, parser steps or deparser steps aren't really a, a relevant cost factor in high speed uh, uh, switches and routers. Yes, but uh, still, if you have a simpler. Um, mechanism, you have no reason to go a more complex one. No, that, that's that's fine, but for that doesn't mean you should do that. No, but but just think about I mean, system. I mean, just that's not just a, it doesn't it doesn't mean it's a not possible or it's a, should uh, be banned absolutely. But uh, it just means that's not a good practice. No, no, but but there see, it's it's it's, it's very simple. System. If we so first of all, we need to we need to recognize that we are really in the network layer up against competition of application people rebuilding the same type of forwarding protocols at higher layers because they only deal with software CPUs, right? We also know that uh, um, over the coming 10 years, uh, we will get more and more, you know, software CPU-like capabilities into our forwarding planes, right? So they'll only get better, not worse, right? So we shouldn't look back um, and limit ourselves by, you know, what P4 tried to do at maximum speed with, you know, I mean, barefoot really, right? Barefoot tried to. Yeah, all I see is I, I, I haven't seen any compelling reason why you have to use a TLV type header rather so, than. Right. So, so let's simply look, so yeah. let, let me it, just, uh, you know, first, there's a note uh, better than that. Second, I don't see the necess uh, necessity. So um, why? Uh, so the question is why? So, and, 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 and you're completely right that we need to show the evidence, right? So, but if I'm already thinking just about QS parameters, right? So, um, if, I, if I simply just try to take apart the parameters that we need um, and, and list them up, right? So, I mean, we've got sequence number. We've got um, uh, basically um, flow identifier. Um, we may have... Um, drop priorities, we may have a DSCP traffic class, right? Mm -hmm. So I think I can come up easily with a list of 10 or more parameters for QS and related operations. Then we may have security parameters, right? And so it's it's extremely hard to um, basically uh, try to figure out what is a reasonable set of um, fewer than 10 um, so um, extension headers well, we put them in so that we get rid of, you know, putting them in, for example, into a TLV structure so that we only need those parameters uh, in the packet that are required for the packet. So, so how are you, are you saying that the, that the only structures should be allowed are TV structures? 
where the L is implicit in the T? Um, all I mean here is a, a better design principle is that all you always tell from the current current header tell what the next header is. Right. And okay. Of yeah, course, yeah. The length of the next header can be variable. You can you may be uh, inherently know the size of the next header, or you have to get to the next header. Well, why isn't that a TL? Why isn't that a TLV? I mean, they may be spread into different pieces of packet. Yeah, here, I in this header, I don't know what the next header is. I have to go to the next header, then uh, then from there, I I I I know the type and uh, get the uh, length and get then. You know, you know, only when when I get the type, I know how to parse the different fields in it. Yeah, but, but so that means one more, same, one more thing. Confusing parsing here, cycles in the header state. I think you're I think. confusing here. Uh, you, you're co um, conflating header with uh, you know parsing structure, right? So a single um, parser stage, right? It is it is parsing not what I would call a header. But a header element. Each right? state might consume multiple cycles. You know, if if I from the current uh, header, I know what's the type of the next header. I can already use uh, the structure of the next header to directly retrieve a lot of it well, information. Well, from wait, wait a moment. Wait a moment. Cycle. But Hang if on, I don't now. know that, I have to wait uh, one more cycle to get. To the, you, let me let me let me, let me try to rephrase it with with the example, right? So my my example is simply that um, when I'm doing um, a a single header that um, has a sequence of let's say one to ten um, uh, state variables of interest, right? So the DSCP, the flow, the sequence number, all these uh, ten different things, and I want to have an arbitrary subset of them depending on what this packet and its services require, right? So that is like, you know, a possible combination of 10 different headers. It's only as compact as we can do it, right? We already know that when we start at the protocol level to start extension headers, then their overhead is uh, larger than simply a sequence of TLVs. So if you want to call every TLV element a separate header, that's fine, right? But I don't think uh, that, that that helps to make it clear that uh, a single TLV header can simply be counted as the number of TLV items in it, and that's that's all there is to it. You know, you you, you can have a uh, another way to handle this. You don't need to actually parse these TLVs in the uh, in in the parser. You just uh, take all of them as a. No, I want to parse single, them because I need if to. You want to parse them difference. then. Then you have to take each TLV as a new header state, and then you need a one a more cycles to parse that state. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, wait so a moment. That, you, that's can always, you can always you can always it's lower. You can always prefetch the T if that's really what you're worried about. So if the structure is TLV, every is... uh, I I have explained the parser architecture. You can not prefetch anything. You just uh, read the current word, and based on current word, you make decision to the next state. So okay. if you know the next state, if you know the next header type uh, in this uh, state, then you can do a lot of things in that cycle. But oh, well, if well, you well, don't well, know, well, you have I to. Hang on, hang on. Can, can, can I? Can I? Can I finish? Right. Yeah. Whether if the T, for example, was the first thing in the header, which it usually yeah. is, you can always prefetch the the T as part of fetching the previous stage. And that tells you when you're parsing the previous stage, what the T is for the next stage. So I think I don't I don't think it matters how you structure this. They you can build an equivalent parsing model. That's that, that's not actually uh, you know support. I don't care whether that's what they do, but, but the you, you, you were trying to impose a theoretical limit. I'm pushing back and us did, did making this design based on just a couple of um, of designs because we also need to know what the Cisco, all the Cisco ones do, and all the yeah, Juniper ones do, and a bunch why, of others. Why you want to introduce that complexity when you well, have a better well, way you wanted, to do you wanted, that? You want... So that, that's always my question. Because why because want... because because there's a big debate that goes on about whether 
the IP model of putting the um, type in the previous header is the correct model or not. There's a huge computer science argument over that. Well, uh, can you uh, give me some pointer to the debate? Well, I, I, at well least, Pat Lipsky uh, was discussing this about uh, 30 I, years I think, ago. Uh, I don't see that's a problem. I actually I think that's a good design. Um, it's not a good design if you're handed it you are, if you're if you are handed it's what follows without natural a natural design so. no it's not a natural design it happens that it is a design but it's a perfectly fine design to have the type within the header you're parsing so how you uh, let's 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 go back to my simple example um uh, as simple as i can make it we do know that you know almost nobody uses flow identifier these days, right? And, and for example, it has been very difficult to use, but they're really good users for it, right? So now let's say we wanna make the flow identifier and also, uh, you know, the MPLS case, um, um, a new extension header field, right? So um, would we wanna design what we call at the MPLS level, a separate extension header, or do we want to make it a TLV inside a single extensible MPLS extension header field, right? So we can use the flow label alone, or in some cases, when we, for example, want to do um, uh, pre-off, we would want to use it together um, with a, a sequence number, right? You need for, for pre-off, you need a flow identifier and a sequence number, whereas for other use cases, you only need a flow identifier. So do we want at the MPLS level to come up with what we call two separate extension headers, or do we want to come up with one extension header uh, where uh, both fields are TLVs? And I would uh, argue for the latter one because we don't want to overdo it with, you know, at the level of extension headers. For the hardware, for the parsing and deparsing, both options, in my opinion, are equivalent. That, that, that's okay. Uh, if you, for example, in the one extension headers, you will uh, include uh, uh, sub substructure, like TLV substructure. Yes. That's okay, but uh, just uh, say uh, that's have a uh, some slight uh, performance implication if you actually want to pass it. Uh, right. Uh, if you don't want to pass it, okay, you just keep the entire extension header. Well, of course, we want to parse it because all the actions that's we're doing on it will depend on the extracted field to be parsed of uh, the packet header vector. Right. Right. If you want to actually use it directly uh, in the uh, processing pipeline, you, you want to pass it, yeah. then it just means you add more state. And uh, because uh, you introduce a TLV, it also has a slightly uh, add more cycles for the parsing. But still, the, the, the performance is fine, as I show here. So that's all, uh, all I see. But I just mean, okay, if you have a substructure, you, today most substructure use TLV. That's, uh, uh, because uh, uh, that's, I think that's a more uh, straightforward way to do. But I, I, I just mean, if you want to do the header, some new top level headers is a better just just to keep them in the chain, then uh, that's more natural and a simpler Sorry, way. Sorry, I didn't get that last time. Can you restate that? What is uh, more natural? Yeah. If you use a TLV in, as a substructure in, in the header, mm -hmm. it's fine. Um, but uh, if uh, you design top level header, um, it's better just to use a header chains, which means yes. um, you just a previous header tell what the next header is. Right. So, and I think that's a discussion that we should have uh, with respect to what what Stuart alluded to already, which is um, how can we build data structures so we can uh, uh, make routers that support optimizations like parallelizations better. Right. So, I mean. That's 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 the second stage, right? I think the, the for, first stage. You know, for, even for ASIC and for MP, this kind of a parallelism doesn't help because there's just the one single thread to do the either use pipeline or use the RTC. Uh, that's not necessarily true. Mode. If you build an ASIC and you do know you have um, very often happening headers, you may want to spend more ASIC stage to start parallelizing. Okay, okay. I'm talking about the today's. Um, oh, yeah. No, no, but what I'm saying is we shouldn't only. Mm -hmm. So I think we we need to be cognizant of um, not 
building something that wouldn't work um, today. But, but, but you we know, shouldn't limit you know, the optimizations even, that we're yeah, supporting. Yeah, but even still, Pastor, Pastor is not a bottleneck. You can still pass all the headers first, then you do whatever you want. You you can do parallel processing or because of pet processing is a real bottleneck, not the parsing. So well, I all think I mean is that all, right, so, you, all you consider some, as an optimization to the parsing is uh, basically useless. How does it, right, so that, that was going back to the question uh, we, we derived from the beginning where I was saying, what happens, let's say here in Tofino, if uh, my um, parser starts to have more than 16 um, stages, Right, so um, to me, that seems like I need to start building up a queue of uh, received packets that I cannot yet start parsing because uh, all my 16 parsers are still busy with other packets, right? So, so we, we would, is, is that, you know, easily possible that, that the other packets are still waiting and, and are queued up? I don't think, oh, I uh, don't know question here. I see the parser, I, I show the parser is not a bottleneck. It's much faster than the interface can, you know, fit the packet in. No, no, but I'm saying that it, it don't, don't, uh, so forget the interfaces, right? This, this is, this is not a distributed thing, right? This is a centralized thing, right? Centralized. Well, there'll be lots of centralized. There'll be lots of uh, distributed parsers around there. Yeah, well, let's let's stay to the simple case that that how you understands. This is a centralized system where there are sixteen parallel parsers. Um, a, a new packet comes in. It is assigned to a free parser, right? So now. No, no, um, no, 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 no. I, I, I assume it's actually maybe okay. It's one parser to an interface, for example, or, or to, to well, one. well. One or more interface. For example, I, I show um, you know if uh, one one parser is a uh, thirty two gigabits per second, but you consider the header parser only, then it might be uh, easy to support multiple one hundred gig interface. So I, I, it's not like you just uh, randomly distribute the, your incoming packet to to the to an add one. It's actually it's a more like uh, uh, several interface are bound to a, a single parser. What, what happens I have if, seen what the other sort when designed. all the parsers are busy and a new packet arrives? Are you claiming that can never happen independent of how large the parsers there, are? There, there could be a small buffer, but uh, to, to, to tolerate the very short term, uh, you know, fluctuation, but uh, usually is the buffer that buffer must be empty because the parser is much faster uh, than than the packet rate. Okay. So I I, I think I've already explained the most of point uh, for today. And there's some other. Uh, more slides, uh, but uh, maybe if uh, there's uh, some further questions, maybe we can discuss in the future. Okay, why are you? Um, yeah. Let me... I think we'll stop the recording right now then, and uh, um, we can adjourn. Mm. I think Loa, I passed you the host privilege, so you might have to stop it from your side. Okay, Loa's uh... was muted. That's yeah. why. Uh, so I need to stop the recording. You say? Yeah, I passed you the host privilege. I. Uh... Okay, recording is in progress. I just close that. Yeah. So uh, press the red button, I guess. Uh, there are more than one red button. Um, stop. Why? Nothing happens. Uh, stop recording.